I'm Fran Brady. I'm a Scottish author, and I've set my fourth novel, The Ghost of Erid, in this beautiful part of Scotland's west coast and its western isles, which are known as the Hebrides. Why? Because I love this area and I come often to spend time here but also because I became interested in the tiny island of Erid through reading the classic novel Kidnapped by Robert Louis Stevenson. Chapter 14 of that novel is set here when the young hero, David Balfour, is shipwrecked on Erid. Researching the author of that novel led me to an interest in the lighthouses that were built by his family. They were known as the Lighthouse Stevensons. I also became interested in the lighthouse keepers and their families who lived on Erid from the 1860s until the lighthouses were automated about a hundred years later. My novel centres around one such family and the story is told by Liza, now in her 90s, looking back to events in 1924 when she was a girl of 12. I'm walking up the causeway between the Isle of Mull and the islet of Erid, and it's the only way you can walk onto Erid from the Isle of Mull and you can only do it when the tides are out. They come in from both sides, meet in the middle and cut Erid off from Mull. And of course it features quite a bit in the novel. Here I am on Erid now. Yeah, 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 yeah. Yeah, yeah. Yeah, yeah, yeah. This is the cottage that the dreaded school teacher, Miss Joan Dow, lives in. And like the master, Robert Louis Stevenson, I'm kind of fascinated by the idea of dual personalities. We know he was fascinated by it. Um, his novel, Dr. Jekyll and Mr. Hyde, is so well known. And if ever anyone had a dual personality, it's the dreaded Miss Dow. Yeah, smile at it and it all day. They quarried the stone on this tiny islet and they took it out in little boats out to the rock in the Atlantic Ocean and they winched the men and the materials onto the rock and they built these amazing structures. So this tiny island has these two claims to fame. The base from which the lighthouses were built and the place of David Balfour's shipwreck in Kidnapped. And I'm hoping it will become well known for something else, for my novel, The Ghost of Erid. Oh, I've made it to the top of the hill. And this is the lookout tower. It was built to house the telescope that was needed when they were building the lighthouses 20 odd miles away out into the Atlantic. And they used that to see whether it was going to be possible in the ever changing weather conditions to take the men and the materials out on boats out to the rock. I used the lookout quite a lot in the novel. Young Liza, when she first arrives in Erid, very soon finds the lookout and she uses it often to draw apart and to get some time to herself and she loves to read, often bringing her copy of Kidnapped up here with her and looking out over the, the view that David Balfour himself would have seen. And there are several very dramatic scenes happen up here in the lookout too. Liza loved to imagine that this would have been the very rock that Davy Balfour sat upon, soaked, shivering and starving, absolutely de feeling desolate, but looking over to the lights of Iona and just longing to be with human beings in a warm little house. The 
ancient sacred isle of Iona also features in my novel. This is Iona Abbey and today it is a, a pilgrimage site for people from all over the world but in 1924 it was very different. This is Dunai, the only hill on Iona. On Christmas Eve of 1924, Liza and her friends, Katrina and Lachlan, come over to Iona. They meet Mr. Oren the Druid in the rookery, and they eat their lunch sitting in the ruins of the abbey, and they finish off the short winter day by climbing up Dunai. There's perhaps nowhere more atmospheric than an old graveyard, and every ghost story needs a graveyard. This is the old cemetery at Fort on the Isle of Mull, and it's very central to the plot. And these are the cottages which were built uh, for the lighthouse keepers' families and which Liza and her mum and dad and her brother Jerry live in, along with five other lighthouse families. Lighthouse families were expected to be reasonably self-sufficient and across the path from each front door of the cottage there was a garden. Each house had its own garden, uh, a large garden, with of course the, the we who see at the bottom. But of course Eried is still here today and life goes on and just to finish up I'd like to introduce you to Steve. It's Steve's music that we've been hearing throughout the film. Uh, I've lived here um, on Eried for five years now. Um, the community is uh, linked to the Fintorn Foundation which is over on the east coast and we are guardians of the, the island for the, for the Dutch owners of, of Erid now. Guests come from all over the world and we do retreats and week-long courses. Um, and the island does the work, uh, the, the amazing atmosphere of this place. And um, so it's a, a very, very powerful place. Um, and we try to be as holistic and, and self-sufficient as we can, doing our own gardening. Uh, it's a very varied lifestyle, as boating, gardening, and, and one of the main things is looking after the cottages that have been over here for over 150 years and trying to uh, keep them in, in the, the way that they were when they helped to inspire people like Robert Louis Stevenson to, to do his, uh, to, to write Kidnapped. Um, I love here, being here, it's an incredible place uh, and if you are interested then, then please look on the website erid.com uh, to, to learn a little bit more about us. Thank you.